AC. Hey, wow, it's, uh, it's been a very long time. Hope you're doing really well. Um, I'll just turn it down a little bit. We are somewhere in the back end of Feb. I think it's the 21st today, something like that. Um, yeah, it's, it's been a while. Uh, it's, it's actually quite nice to be back. I've summoned the uh, energy to get behind the camera and make a video. Um, I've kind of been putting it off for a long time and I haven't really been felt the motivation to get excited about it and talk ever about the music. But I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna make one and I've had a really nice evening. Um, I've been drinking red wine and listening to lots of really nice jazz. Um, got the candle going, the light's really nice. Um, my side of my new room is sort of taking shape a bit. Um, so I'm just gonna do a really nice, slow, relaxed video. Um, it's not gonna be full of facts and I guess details and descriptions and stuff like that. It's just gonna be a very easy, low key kind of video showing some stuff off. Um, I've had some amazing look, luck with jazz records. Um, well, I think so for me, things I've been after for a while. Um, and these are all, apart from maybe one or two, uh, I found, I'm pretty much, yeah, I would say all apart from two, I found locally in New Zealand, which is um, a big deal for these jazz records, I think. Um, but what we're listening to in the background um, is this record here, the Aiza Suzuki Trio and Quartet. Uh, blow up on three blind mice. Uh, this came out in 1979 in Japan only. Um, really, really beautiful record. Um, Aizawa Suzuki plays the cello and the bass. Um, I think that's correct. That is correct, yes. Um, and, and, and that's a real highlight and a differentiator in this album. Some amazing textures and playing. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's a real, it's an amazing sounding album as well. It's really clean. Um, and just the stuff he does with the cello um, really adds, I guess, like a tone or a feeling to it. Um, yeah, I think this is a really great album. Um, but it's just been sort of set in the mood, I guess. Um, I've, been, I've played it through twice. Um, but yeah, so without going into too much detail, uh, a friend and I ended up at a, uh, I guess, a private sale um, of some jazz records and uh, we each found some really great things. Um, there's a few things in here that um, I've just been wanting for a while and I hadn't got around to grabbing them yet. Um, this is Thelonious Monk Crisscross. This is a CBS, I think it's a, U, no, it's a US pressing? That can't be right. Um, good start, James. Anyway, it doesn't really matter what the pressing is. Um, an absolutely wonderful um, album. Um, yeah, it's it's just one of those, what can I say? Um, my favorite track on here is, um, <coughs> sorry. The, uh, the track Criss Cross itself. Uh, yeah, re really great. Um, I feel like I don't have enough Thelonious Monk um, and I'm always looking to fill them out. So these were all weirdly very cheap and I won't say the prices, but a lot cheaper than they should have been. Um, I also grabbed this one because Shamefully didn't have it. Um, so it's obviously Panonica is the, the standard on here. April in Paris is also on here. This is an, a lovely original, um, I think Australian pressing. Um, so yeah, really fantastic. I don't need to talk about these too much. Um, just happy to fill them in. Another, another one, um, it's also an Australian pressing is this, which surprisingly I didn't have Miles Davis around about midnight. Um, I'm gonna chuck this on afterwards because that's the whole thing I'm feeling right now. Just really nice, um, easy jazz. Um, it's hitting the spot. Uh, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, good old Paul Chambers. Um, We'll keep going with the this sort of stuff. Um, a Duke Ellington I was missing, the Afro a Eurasian Eclipse. This thing is absolutely fire. Um, it's it's so dynamic and punchy and um, that really grows out of my speakers. And the other night I was playing this quite loud. Um, I was feeling very enveloped by the sound. And um, oh, yeah, this, some of the bass playing on here as well is absolutely fantastic. Um, but obviously this is a slightly later Duke Ellington album, um, Paul Gonzalez, Harold Ashby. Um, yeah, see, hmm, I forgot what I was gonna say. Uh, this came out in 1975, it was recorded in 71. Yeah, ju just, just, just a, a big bounce out, a big bounce sound, really dynamic, lots of, um, 
I guess, African and Eastern sounds mixed into this, um, just done really well. Uh, I think this is a really fantastic album and definitely a Duke Ellington to grab if you ever see it. Um, this is this is one that, um, this is the next two I kind of jumped out of my skin to find, not because they're specifically rare or um, I guess really hard to hard to find, but they're just two records that I've been wanting for ages. Um, and I, they're kind of not expensive enough to buy on the internet and not, you know, either they're sitting in that zone. Um, but that one is uh, Blues and Roots uh, by the wonderful uh, Charlie Mingus. Um, absolutely fantastic. I'm gonna sneeze, so I really apologize for that. Maybe I'm not gonna sneeze. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> I'm o over the moon to finally get this. And the other one, which may surprise you, um, that I should have had by now, um, is th this amazing, amazing lineup, um, lineup and album, uh, Red Clay by Freddie Hubbard. Um, this came out in CTI uh, in the I mean, early 70s. Something like that. Um, yeah. I love, I love this graphic design on here. I love the cover. I love the font. I love that that's the only text on the, on the back cover here. Um, yeah, the, the opening track is kind of one of those essential jazz uh, tracks that you just have to hear. Uh, just the title track, Red Clay. Um, you know, if I made a list of 10, if I wanted to play 10 uh, compositions for someone that's never heard jazz before, I would put Red Clay in there. I mean, that could be a really interesting video, actually, just 10 standalone uh, pieces of music. Um, it will be a, a massive call to do. But, uh, you know, I'll put that in there. Um, it's just absolutely fantastic. Um, it, it's really groovy and funky. It's kind of almost spiritual in parts. Um, yeah, it, it, it's really great. Um, so I'm really happy to find a really, really immaculate um, US pressing of this. Whew. Yeah, uh, stoked with that. Um, okay, now we're getting to a little bit more interesting out there stuff. Um, okay, this is a release from a couple of years ago. Um, which no one that I've seen in the VC talk about, uh, weirdly enough. I'm going to have a sip of wine. Uh, I'm a bit out of practice and um, my voice is feeling a bit, a bit scratchy. I'll turn the music up a little bit. Um, so this came out a couple of years ago and I think this is like, like really good, like underratedly good. Um, so it's recorded over, I think it was uh, four sessions, um, ranging from something like, it's on the front here, isn't it? 1990 to 2014. But um, yeah, you, you've got, um, sorry mate, <coughs> this weird cough has appeared. Um, Phil Ranelin has a side um, with um, musician, local musicians. Um, Harold McKinney has a side. Pamela Wise, who I don't know, has a side too. Um, she does four, oh no, I think, yeah, that is correct. Um, but anyway, yeah, this is really fantastic. It, it range, ranges from, um, I guess, uh, spiritual stuff to soul jazzy stuff to some spoken word bits. Um, I guess uh, deep jazz. Um, yeah, it's, and it sounds really good too. Um, I, I'm a sucker for this logo. Um, I absolutely love it. So <laughs> that, that was a, a calling card. Yeah, I, I, I don't know anyone else has, has talked about this in the VC, but again, I haven't been watching um, many videos. Um, for the others of you that have followed my channel for a while. I've kind of been at a bit of a life change and broke up with my partner of 13 years um, last year. So I haven't really been feeling VC or watching videos, I guess, so much. Um, so this is the first one back in a groove, I guess. Um, and speaking of back in the groove, this is probably my find of the last couple of years. And I feel like I say that a lot, but um, I managed to find a uh, In The Shrink copy of this um, for an absolutely stupidly <laughs> cheap price um, in New Zealand, in a collection. Um, I just could not believe it. Um, this is Marching On by the Heath Brothers. Um, yeah, it is a slightly later French press, I wanna say from like 78. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy to get this. It, I don't think it's worth the price that people are paying for it. It's really good. And there's some really nice moments on here. Um, I mean, the track My Moon, I think the version on Stanley Cowell's um, ECM record is way better. Um, I mean, no, it's good. It's, 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 it's good, but it doesn't blow me away like some of the str other strategies does. But yeah, I, I, you know, to find this is something that just doesn't happen that much. 
not outside of America these days anyway, I feel like. Um, so that that was, you know, that's probably one of the, the bigger finds, something that I, you know, I was almost gonna buy the reissue several times. Um, uh, Masahiko Sato, the Japanese piano player. This is a Live at the Palladium album. Um, this is a really interesting, it's quite a tough listen, not because it's uh, free jazz and tough and out there, but because it's a trio and it goes for a while and they really take their time and stretch out and uh, play with space and texture a lot. I don't know how to describe it. I wanna say play with texture, but um, yeah, it's a very textured record and it's in a very live setting and it's kind of, you can tell that they can really, really play and they know how to go out and in and they play it safe a little bit too much, but then they go out there and uh, yeah, it, it's pretty pretty interesting. Um, this is a Japanese press on a label, I can't remember what the label is. I'm not gonna pull it out. Um, but yeah, it's definitely worth a listen. I think this has been reissued a couple of times too. Um, yeah, yeah, I need to give it more time. I enjoyed it. I just had, I just, I can't remember exactly my feelings of it at the time, but it was a struggle. <laughs> um, okay, this is another one I, I found in the in the private collection. Uh, I was really stoked. Don't have this. Uh, this is really really wonderful. Um, hearing Thelonious in the setting with the jazz messengers um, really really complements each other. Really sets them off. Um, I was kind of blown away by this. Um, I, I had known of it more than I'd known, known it, and when I finally sat down and listened to it, um, I was really surprised by how much I enjoyed it. Um, just just really, really simple, exquisite uh, touches. Um, so you got the versions of Evidence on here, In Walk Bud, Blue Monk, I Mean You, um, Purple Shade. Uh, yeah, really great. Um, just really classy, I guess would be a way to describe it. Um, super wonderful. All right, a couple more. So these ones I am on the fence about. Oh no, yeah, we'll do these two. Um, this is uh, obviously Hometo Pasquale. Pasquale, uh, this is the one, his debut, which is kind of like a 70s big band, Brazilian loungy, kind of easy listening, but kind of jazzy thing. I'm not fully sold on it, on the Muse label. Um, this one is kind of, for me, more interesting. It's, it's more like a, a Brazilian jazz fusion record. Um, it's really well recorded. Um, yeah, I, I like it. I don't love it. Um, these have only been in the house a week, so I need to give them more time. Um, but yeah, I, you know, check out Slaves Mass. That's the one to get. And his stuff on uh, the Miles Davis album, which is escaping me right now um, that he's on. Should we put something else on? Um, what do we feel like? Uh, da, da, da. What will what will kick? Let's just go something. I feel like if I put the Miles Davis, and I'm going to get the copyright strike because that seems to happen, and I'll be blocked in a million different countries. Um, I'm going to talk. I was going to talk about this, but you know what? I'm going to chuck it on because it's a really really great record. This is the Red Garland Trio Groovy. Um, full disclosure: I'm wearing my pajamas, so when I turn around. <laughs> You'll see me in my pajamas, but I don't care. I'm enjoying myself. I'm having a good Friday night. So yeah, this is a um, original jazz classics reissue, um, which to me sound fantastic, and they are more than ad ad adequate. Um, but we will chuck that on. Um, yeah, this is a, a really beautiful. Um, yeah, it's just one of those albums you want to play late at night. Um, yeah, I just realized um, this is an, another record I picked up that I hadn't shown because I've just been playing it. This is Mal Waldron 1 and 2. So it's actually just a 2 LP set that came out in Prestige um, and it's the albums 1 and 2. Um, really interesting, as 2 especially has um, Jackie McLean, uh, Idris Solomon and Sahib Shahab on it uh, with Art Taylor. Um, which is a really interesting lineup. I really, really enjoyed this. Um, I'm not overly confident speaking about Mal Waldron, but I find the way he plays piano really interesting. And he does this thing where, I guess with like, when he's about to play a solo, the way he starts his solo is always really engaging. And um, he does it in a really interesting and clever way on this. In the same way that kind of like, 
and like sort of the mid period of Coltrane, when he starts a solo, he has the, the first few notes really grab your attention. It kind of reminded me of that. It's really hard to describe, but I just think he knows how. He just starts a solo in this really, really strange, interesting way, and it, it does it quite a lot, especially on the second one. Um, but I've been really enjoying that, um, getting familiar with Mal Waldron. But yeah, this is what's on the background. Um, Red Garland Trio, groovy. Um, yeah, I mean, Paul Chambers on bass is, you know, a, a really, really big plus for me always. Um, so yeah, really happy to grab this one. Okay, what do we got? Three left. I finally picked up the reissue of this. Uh, yeah, great. <laughs> I'm just smiling because if, if you know this album, I don't need to talk about it. I think everyone should hear this. Uh, I think it's absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, this is the reissue on like white colored vinyl. Um, but yeah, amazing. Uh, I could talk about more, but I'm not gonna bother. We'll, we'll keep going, because we're on 15 minutes already. Um, this is one that I picked up the latest repress of it, and um, it's a really shit copy, because it's now again again, which I always have bad luck with them. Um, it's warped, it's pressed off center, it's really, really noisy. Um, it doesn't help that this isn't a great rec quality recording anyway, but the music is undeniably beautiful, and it's a really true fusion of Oriental and jazz, and it's just done so beautifully and so seamlessly, and so, I guess, authentically. Um, yeah, it, it's a really special, you know, album. I'm just, I just, it annoys me that it's a shit, they've done a shit job with the repress. Um, again, now again, I've had so many bad experiences. I feel like I rushed through that. And then, the last one, as Spiritual Nature by Masahiko Togashi. I've probably shown this because I bought this like months ago, but it's really noisy. And I've finally given it a clean and given it a listen. Uh, I have talked about this before, I'm sure, on camera. But it's, uh, yeah, really clean, a really beautiful, um, like, almost like a spirit, Japanese spiritual jazz record, I guess. Um, very minimal, very sparse. Um, I guess the space and the ambience is a lot of the feeling uh, in this. Yeah, I really like it. It's really great. So there we go, I could do another update with non-jazzy stuff, but that's the jazzy stuff. Um, yeah, I'm gonna keep drinking my wine and uh, listen to some more jazz and I guess just enjoy the feeling I'm having this evening. Um, yeah, pajamas on, slippers on, candle in the background. It's just a nice feeling. All right, there we go, thank you so much. Um, we'll talk soon.